I'm Ingrid Lotzer. I'm Gavin Marcus. And we're from seven t-shirts each. Seven t-shirts each. We just recently had to make a big change in our lives. We were originally heading to Vietnam and now we're not. We're heading to Phuket. And I know that sounds terrible. Oh, woe is me. However, we've had so much change in the past couple of months. It's quite a big deal at the last minute to have to make yeah. these kind of changes. And the reason we had to make this change was we pretty much remember that at the beginning of the year, we had e-visa capability as a South African citizen for getting into uh, Vietnam. However, South Africa is no longer on the e-visa list for getting into Vietnam. There is also no longer a straightforward visa on arrival unless you're getting in for a business visa. So what that means is that we need to get in on a tourist visa through an official tour operator recognized by the Vietnamese government. Not a major problem, except for the fact that to do that will cost you 450 US dollars for the visa and two nights yeah. worth of accommodation. That's hell of a expensive. The actual cost should be around about $20 for the visa, $25 for an approval letter for the visa, and around about $60 for the accommodation per night. So that's at roughly $210 as we work it out in order to get it easy. The actual cost of $450 means that socialism and capitalism are really good bedfellows right now when you have a captive market. So what we've done is we've uh, changed our itinerary and we're heading off to uh, Phuket, which is the largest island in Thailand and no major hardship in actually heading off to uh, Phuket either. One of the reasons why we said no to Vietnam is because we had to book our accommodation through the agency and what that meant for us is that we would have to stay in hotels. Hotels don't work for our nomadic work lifestyle and so this big change meant that we had to put in a lot of time and effort into finding, first of all, finding a new country and then second of all, finding the place that would best suit us. So the types of things that we look for, we have a certain list that we look for from the place that we're living in. And we've been quite lucky, but actually that luckiness is hours and hours. We've quite worked it out that it's probably about 40 hours of work in terms of researching places that would work for us. What do we look for? Well, if you go to our website, we'll have a full list there. But in general, we're looking for a place that we can work in, first of all. We're looking for a place that has at least two rooms. Why? Because we're working in different um, meetings, we have different things that happen at night, and so we need to have separate private rooms that we can have our meetings in. We're doing our own cooking. So where are the grocery shops? Are they close by? Do we need transport in order to get to those grocery stores? We're looking for immersing ourselves into the local culture. So we're not interested in the Western food. I don't care if there's a McDonald's down the road. We're also wanting to understand, do we need transport? Do we need a car like we do in Mauritius? Or can we get by with just walking or have a bike? We get asked often how it is that we cope with the stress. So there has been a lot of change and what it is that we do in order to stay resilient. So for me, I call it my attitude of platitude. And why? Platitudes actually work for me. Platitudes actually were developed and used and why they have become platitudes is because they help people deal with hard situations. And for me, they really work. So the one that works for me now in this situation is good things come from bad things. Another one that works for me is what will be, will be. It doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you're having fun. And then if none of those work, then acting your age is for old. And who around here is an old person, really? Yes. So when it comes to this kind of change that we've been going through, it may seem as though this is just an individual bit of change, but it isn't. We've been going through a lot of change for the past year, year and a half. You know, all the way from house on the market, selling the house, getting rid of our furniture, traveling in a way that we've never traveled before. My little bit of inner stoicism comes out. And I don't mean the stiff upper lip English way of stoicism. I mean, my form of stoicism. One of the ways that right now that represents best for me is in this quote from Epictetus, and I can't remember the exact words, but it's bring will to harmony with whatever happens so that nothing happens against our will and nothing that we wish for fails to happen. 
essentially for me what that means is this is all part of the plan if i have a plan whatever happens is going to be fulfilling that plan and that's pretty much represented by this we wanted to go to thailand but going to thailand wasn't going to be now it may have been later however it's now what that also does is it enables us to go from thailand to laos which is one of the easier routes into laos laos to cambodia and then cambodia on fitting in three places that we didn't think we'd fit in right now the change also meant that we learned we can deal with change it isn't a train smash we only had two weeks in order to get things sorted and get our accommodation paid for and, and flights, and, flights. Yeah. and what we learned is that change is okay which means suddenly we can go oh what where else in the world can we go how can we change maybe india is on the cards maybe india is on the maybe cards i'm gavin moffat i'm ingrid lotso we're from seven t-shirts each why don't you hit the subscribe button below follow us and our adventures uh, see what's coming up next